when I initially routed out this channel, I told you it was going to be 5 eighths of an inch. As it turns out, I had to go a sixteenth of an inch deeper because of the jig that I was using, that Stumac jig. So I had, ended up having to go down to 3 eighths of an inch uh, deep with that truss rod. Um, not critical, but uh, you want to be careful that you don't get too thin so that that neck isn't too thin when you're done carving it and weakens that neck. Uh, that's one of the issues with these single action truss rods is that when you get up on that upper end of the neck, you start running out of uh, wood and it weakens the neck. You've probably seen a lot of the Gibson uh, neck, the headstock just fall over and crack right off. So you have to be aware of that and be mindful of it when you're carving this out. Um, so we're at 0.375, 3 eighths of an inch deep in the center of the length of that truss rod channel, which is right in here. And so what I do is I take a 3 16th inch bit and I drill point one two five or an eighth of an inch deep in the very center and that's going to gradually go back out to zero on both ends so the next step is 0.3 roughly uh, deeper than 0.3 less than that or not, not deeper shallower 0.3 uh, shallower and then 0.3 shallower 0.3 shallower till you get all the way out to the ends where you have zero and then you gently gouge that curve in what I use uh, to do that is just uh, a rod, a 3 16 inch rod, and I file down the the end of it with uh, you know just a just a, a regular file, same way that you might file off a card scraper, and sharpen the end of that rod, and then and then just work that rod. It works just as good as uh, um, you know a card scraper works for scraping that wood down. And then I start at the zero end, and I, I, uh, I start shaving down till I get to that first mark, which is about a thirty seconds of an inch deep. And then the next mark down is going to be two thirty seconds of an inch deep, and the third mark down will be three thirty seconds of an inch deep, and then finally uh four thirty seconds of an inch deep that we've got down to that original four thirty seconds one eighth down to that original location that we drilled in with the first hole in the center and I do that from both sides and work both sides so you get a gentle curve then you're going to eventually and I'll show you you're going to take your filler strip which sets in the in the truss rod channel it'll set in the truss rod channel on top of the truss rod and then we will mark out where we need to carve that out. We'll lock it down and, and actually we will mark it out and uh, we'll end up uh, gluing, gluing the rod in place. Um, and you will, you will see uh, what, happens, what happens once you get this, once you get this in and the string action from the tension on the strings pulls that neck into place it'll pull the it'll pull the neck it'll pull the rod it'll bend the rod and the truss rod will work to push it back up into place um, but it has to have something to push against if it hasn't push if it's not pushing against anything and then uh, you're not going to get any movement so that's why you have to get that filler strip in and that's why you have to carve that little bit of a curve um, because that's the way the the rod works it works to push it up so um, you can do a little bit more digging if you're not quite understanding my explanation and uh, you'll get an idea of you know why you have to do what you do with this truss rod um, what I've done is I've gone ahead and uh, carved out almost to the bottom on one half of this um, neck blank so that you can see and I'm hoping that you're going to be able to see this that shows up on the video. Um, see the the f the the four holes that I drilled. The the middle hole's a little bit uh, disfigured now because I've been carving down to it. But the other holes are pretty visible. And on one side, I've completely carved it down to the one eighth inch mark. And on the other side, I haven't started carving. So here you can see the depths 
that I've drilled into the truss rod channel and I start from this end and I'll gouge to this line and then I'll gouge down to that depth and then I'll gouge to that depth and then my final depth and I'll finally have a nice curve all the way through that channel. Um, the process of of gouging this out is, is nothing more than running the running this little bar, the 3 16 inch bar that I made, a little gouger, down the center of the channel. I'm not going to go ahead and, and show you how I did that. Um, if you've done any kind of woodworking, it's just a matter of you know pushing it down through and scraping that that uh, wood out and uh, I think you can handle that on your own um, but I'm gonna go ahead and finish the other side and then when I'm done I will show you uh, on the filler strip exactly what's going on with that truss rod so I'll be back in a minute uh, and let you take a look at that I've finished uh, gouging out the channel I've installed my filler strip and clamped it down and you can see how there's a gradual drop all the way across the truss rod from end to end from center to either end it's a approximately an eighth of an inch drop and that's what's going to give us our uh, action on the truss rod if I I've drawn a line on this so you, you can kind of get a better idea maybe if you can see that line can you see that curve how it goes from one end to the other end and there's a gradual curve and it gets deeper across it so I will take this strip install it in, and you can actually see the action here let me if I squeeze that, can you, can you see it going down? I haven't quite got the strength that the... But that's plenty and plenty, plenty, plenty of action to uh, get this truss rod to work. Um, I'll install this, I'll glue this strip in place, and then I will plane it down to the surface of the neck top and we'll be ready to uh, complete the rest of this neck which is not part of what I'm going to show you I just wanted to go over this uh, truss rod installation so I'm gonna go ahead and glue this strip into place I give myself a few threads on the end of the nut so I don't want it too tight I don't want it, I don't want it bending the rod or anything right now I want it loose and uh, I'll get back when uh, the glue up's done and, and I've got the, the strip planed down and I'll let you take a look at the final product. I've gone ahead and installed my filler strip, glued it into place, and then I took a block plane to take it down to just about the surface of the top of the neck. Used my belt sander, uh, not turned on with the power but just ran the top of the neck across that belt sander and then used a card scraper to smooth it out to complete the process so I'm done with the neck installation of the truss rod and it looks like this it came out pretty nice I think uh, the next step on this neck will be to glue up the rest of the headstock glue on the heel uh, blanks and then I'll be ready to start carving this neck and install it onto the guitar body so that's the process that I've uh, used I hope that uh, anybody that's out there watching has found this informative uh, if you have uh, leave me some comments or uh, send me an email or whatever and uh, if you found something that you think uh, I didn't do right or that you think could be done better I'd love to hear that uh, always looking to improve the processes and help everybody in the long run uh, so there you have it and I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video it's the first one that I've done and I hope that you found it informative thanks again